Well, good evening. I want to welcome you to our Bible study on this Tuesday evening. It is the sixth Tuesday after the Pentecost. That wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of Jesus Christ to the church. That Holy Spirit that sustains us. And so today's lesson, once again, will be a lesson of growth. I want you to hear in all of our lessons how God is calling us to grow. Just one announcement or two. Uh, before I begin, you will notice that we are still not back to live worship or Bible studies. I know that there are many people who call into question, why? Why are we waiting so long? There are many congregations around you and in your neighborhood that are ready and back to worship on every Sunday basis. Well, we've made a decision that in our context, it doesn't make sense. It is too risky and dangerous a thing. However, one of the things that we are doing is that we are making sure that our building is open on two occasions, on Sundays from 9 o'clock until 11 a.m., 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., where you can come with your family or come with your friends. You're welcome to come to the altar and receive Holy Communion together. I will be there to talk to you, to pray with you, to, uh, to distribute the elements. It will be done in a very safe manner. I will not have any direct contact with you. I will be standing ample distance away. And we also make sure that you receive elements that have been separately sealed for your safety. We also ask you, please respect those around you and come with your masks. We don't let people into the building without masks on. The only time to take them off is when we participate in the, uh, actually take the elements of the bread and the wine. But we do invite you to come. And we uh, just encourage you to connect with me. Hopefully that way, physically, I can see you. We can talk with each other. But you also might run into a few other of your brothers and sisters of Christ and have the opportunity uh, on the sidewalk or out in front of the steps to just have a good discussion with them and talk to them. We are going to be patient a little while longer before we open this building and before we invite us back to live worship. We want to make sure that you are safe because you truly are the most precious resource that God has given us. Let's begin with prayer today. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the members of this congregation. I know that we're anxious to get back to worshiping together and being together. This has just been a, a really grueling time. And the most frustrating thing about it again is just that we've been separated from one another from that support that we've always uh, depended upon week in and week out. But God, we are still the church. We've been faithful. Uh, we've been here not just obviously online with our Bible studies and worship, but we have made a difference in this community. So uh, helping feed the poor and those who are in desperate need. This congregation has been faithful. Again, help us to continue to hold together during these difficult times. And we lift up this world and pray for your healing to be upon us. We lift up this country because within this world that is broken, we have a country that is right now broken as well, too. And so we come to you asking that you would heal us this day. For you ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to take a look at the lesson for today. We've been, the last week or two, participating in the continuous readings that we have on Sunday mornings from the book of Genesis. It is amazing. The unfortunate thing is we don't read the entire book of Genesis in our Sunday morning worship services because... It's a daily reading. If you actually follow the lectionary readings, you will read through the entire book of Genesis. And uh, if you get all of it, well, I'm just getting a few snippets here. So I may need to give you a little bit of background. We are already up to Isaac's sons. And I'm titling today's uh, little Bible study, A Battle for Preeminence. Because isn't that what happens? I want to, first of all, start with this. Genesis 1 starts with creation of the universe through a peaceful word of God. Out of a word, let there be light, God brings order to the chaos of the universe. A simple word. In every other mythology, in every other ancient mythology, it is violence that creates. In our belief, it is a word of peace that creates. And so the entire Bible's foundation is set upon this word of peace. Let there be light. Unfortunately, we humans do a really crummy job of living within God's peace. And so the stories of the book of Genesis 
show God's continual attempt to reconcile us, but our continuous attempt to break relationship with one another. And so that's what I want you to see in the story of Isaac's sons and their attempt to wrestle with each other for preeminence. So let me read to you from the book of Genesis chapter 25, beginning with verse 19. These are the records of the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham because became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 43 years of age when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Padanuram, the sister of Laban, the Aramean, to be his wife. Jacob prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was barren. And the Lord answered him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. I want to stop here for a minute because we're going to take this little section by section. Here we have another story about a barren woman unable to have a child. What is the deal? You'll wonder if the real problem isn't the woman, if maybe it's the men, because it seems like all the men in Abraham's family sure have a problem being able to perform and deliver a child. So I'm, I'm wondering if it's the men, but you know, that certainly wasn't a scientific thing back in those days. They didn't know. But if you're thinking, man, this is, haven't I heard this story before about a barren woman? Uh, yeah, many times in the Bible it mentions this. Because what it does is it sets us up that anticipation how God is going to somehow fulfill his promise, despite the fact that all the barriers seem to be in the way would prevent this from happening. God, remember, promised Abraham that his wife Sarah would have a child. He was an ancient man, 80 years of age before this promise was fulfilled. God took his time. So yes, we saw this story before. Abraham and his wife, Sarah, were unable to have a child. child. Now we've got another story. Isaac and Rebekah, unable to have a child. Again, if you said, boy, I've heard this before too. Oh, yes, in the New Testament, remember? Elizabeth and Zechariah. They gave birth to who again? I'm waiting for it. I can probably hear it. John the Baptist. That's right. So what do we learn from this? One of the things I think that I learned right away is that Isaac learned something from his dad. Remember, Abraham was constantly wrestling with God, and it took him a long time to eventually trust God. Isaac, when he runs into his very first difficulty in life, what does he do? Bam, right away, he immediately took to the Lord in prayer his concerns. I think that's amazing. Isaac was a godly man. The amazing thing about Isaac, he was so close to God. God heard these prayers. His prayer was answered almost immediately. Now, I, I just what I just said gave the impression that what I meant because he was such a godly, kindly man and prayed rightly, God answered the prayer. That's not how prayer works, by the way. If God is going to answer prayer, God's going to answer prayer. Even if you don't pray the prayer, God is going to do what God is going to do, okay? It's not your prayer and it's not your faithfulness that makes things happen. And so I apologize if I gave you that impression. It was God's will. God heard Isaac's prayer. God responded immediately. Now, let's go on. The children, however, they struggled within Rebecca in her belly. And she said, if this is so why then am I this way? In other words, if this is such a blessing, if this is such a blessing to have twins, why do I have this fighting that's going on in my belly? I don't know what it's like to have a child in my belly. I can't imagine two kicking all at the same time. That's got to be chaos. I don't know. So she went to inquire before the Lord, and the Lord said, Your two nations are in your womb. Two peoples will be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, the older shall serve the younger. So she had a prophecy, I guess, so to, so to speak. Um, when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Now the first came forth red all over, like a hairy garment. They named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came forth with his hand holding onto Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was 60 years old when she finally gave birth to them. So remember, he was 40-some, 40 42 when he got married. 
18 years later at the age of 60. Can you imagine having a child when you're 60 years of age? That would be exhausting. Not only just any kid, twins that were constantly at each other's throat. They were vying for preeminence. You know, it, it reminds me, they're so different too. So radically different. Reminds me of, uh, I think it was the 1980s, early 90s, there was a movie called Twins with Danny DeVito, Arnold Schwarzenegger. They were, they were two completely different creatures and, and beings and men. If you can imagine, again, Arnold, big muscular guy, and of course Danny DeVito, little small guy. Uh, they were so different. That's the way with these twins here that she gives birth to, Jacob, uh, Jacob, uh, with, with um, what, I'm sorry, I can't even think what I'm saying. Or Jacob and Esau, as she gave birth to them. And so, the amazing thing again about Rebecca, when she knew and felt this fighting in her belly, what's the first thing that Rebecca does? She takes it, takes it to the Lord in prayer. Her concern that she had was that the violence in the womb would lead to division, which that's a prophecy that she, re she received. It did lead to division. But the first thing she did was take it to the Lord in prayer. I want you to keep that in mind a minute. She gave birth to these beautiful boys, Esau, the red, the athletic one, <clears throat> the red, the hairy boy, and then Jacob, the heel grasper. That's what the name Jacob means, by the way. He is appropriately named because Jacob constantly tried to take by force from his brother. Going on. The boys grew up. Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was a peaceful man, living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he had a taste for the game. But Rebecca, she loved Jacob. You see, so the parents are now divided in their favorites. They both have... Their faves. When Jacob cooked a stew, Esau came in from the field and was immediately famished. Esau said to Jacob, Please let me have a swallow of that red stuff there, for I'm famished. Therefore his name was called Edom. But Jacob, again, these mean, names mean something, and that's, that's why these things are thrown out here. But Jacob said, First, sell me your birthright. Esau said, Behold, I'm about to die. So what use is my birthright? A little bit dramatic that Esau is. not I'm going to die. Oh, my, I'm famished. What am I going to do? I'll sell you my birthright. <coughs> what does it mean? Jacob said, first swear to me. And so he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew. And they ate, they drank. He rose, went on his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. <laughs> Uh, you know, so here's what we see. We saw again, the, the parents chose their favorites. That's kind of a sad thing. Mom chose her favorite, Jacob, the peaceful one. Dad chose Esau, the strong and mighty one. And later we're going to hear a story, if you continue reading this, how she, Rebecca, helped her son Isaac, or helped her son Jacob deceived the father Isaac, who was blind, so that Jacob received the inheritance and blessing of a firstborn. It's just amazing. So Esau was a little bit of a dummy. You gotta, you gotta admit that. But Isaac became, or Jacob really lived up to his name of heel grasper, taking by force things that did not belong to him. I mean, if this is your brother that was hungry, would you just give him food to eat? So the Bible is now setting up to us, uh, for us, this battle that was about to take place between these two brothers. But before we get to that, is there a takeaway from this lesson? Remember what I said at the beginning. God created the world to be a world of peace. Jacob and Esau were not living according to that peace. Jacob, the heel grasper, who wanted to take everything by force to have everything in his possession would be the one who God would use. Not because he took things by force. You're going to see that as you read this lesson. But because eventually he came and humbled himself before God, that is when God could truly use him. 
If there's anything we learn about this little vignette, this story, it is simply this. When we come to these concerns in life, what are we supposed to do with them? Take them to the Lord in prayer. When we come to those days of conflict, this is not God's will for Jacob and Esau to be fighting each other. God wants to make a mighty nation of both of them, but they are both trying to be preeminent. This is not God's will for us. We should take these things to God in prayer. So maybe you are struggling today. You have a massive concern in your life. Guess what you should do? Be like Isaac. Take it to the Lord in prayer. You're concerned about your health, your well-being, the violence that goes around. Because right now, let me tell you, brothers and sisters are divided once again in the United States of America. What should we do? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Don't contribute to the violence. Don't contribute to the vision. Let's take it to the Lord in prayer and pray for God's healing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we too are witnessing once again the story of Jacob and Esau played out in front of us. You love both Jacob and Esau. You want to bless both and make a mighty nation of both and bless the entire world, but here they are fighting, wrestling. Oh my goodness, this is exactly what's going on here in our country today. Brothers and sisters are fighting one another. God, we pray for your peace and for your healing. Help us not to add to this noise. Let us back away in the circumstances of this type of chaos. Let us be voices of peace and reason. And may your peace rule in our hearts. For he asks this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you and send you forth in peace in the name of our Father. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.